All right, Draft Central coverage continues here on CLNS. John Zanis, Taylor Kyle's ripping through every single player the Patriots took in the 2023 NFL Draft. This segment is powered by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Head over to FanDuel.com slash Boston, deposit 10, bet 5, get 200 in bonus bets, no questions asked. And again, Taylor, they did it. They did it. Pick woo 187. Mercy. Sweet mercy. They shut they finally shut me up. Uh, and a lot of other people who had been waiting, 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 waiting on receiver. And again, uh, it's late. And uh, but they made a splashy pick at 187. Uh Keishon Butte, boomer bust player out of LSU, was once considered a very highly touted prospect did not have great production have some off-field and character concerns that we don't really know necessarily what those are but um didn't have a great combine fell way down the draft here to the point where the Patriots could pick him there's some NFL analysts out there who call this one of the great picks of the draft uh and a player who could very well prove to be the top receiver in this entire class and wouldn't that be something for the Patriots to pass on so many options throughout all of the picks that they'd had here and land themselves a stud here let's go with our best case scenario of what you think Butte could possibly be having looked at some of his tape yeah, so he's a guy who has inside-out versatility, which, like, when we were talking about, say, Flowers, that was the big appeal. Was Not only was he a dynamic athlete who could win at different levels of the field, but he also has scheme versatility and alignment versatility. Now, Booty is a guy who's got that explosiveness. I don't think he's quite as dynamic deep down the field. He's not that same kind of threat as Flowers, but he's got really good ball tracking. He's got enough speed to threaten deep, like, not a burner, but he can get behind guys and stack. Uh, he's got good ball skills, although drops were a pretty significant issue. I think he had seven last season, uh, which was a spike from seasons past. So, you know, you never know what exactly happened there, but it's definitely something that needs to be brought under control a little bit more. Um, he's a pretty smooth route runner, although he is raw. You see a lot of the potential, though. Like, he he has the idea of getting guys blind spots, to make them uncomfortable, kind of get them to turn their hips and make it easier for them to separate. And after the catch, that's the one of probably the biggest thing is he will take a slant and go all the way like 70 yards to the house. And that's not something the Patriots have had in a very long time. So, and I've talked about making life easier on Mac Jones, where, yeah, give him just a dump off where you can make a play and it doesn't have to be him, you know, doing the impossible, because that's not what Mac was drafted to do, necessarily. Um, so, yeah, this is a really exciting pick, and someone who, if he reaches his potential – could possibly be the best player on the team or the best receiver. I'm sorry, on the team. And that's what somebody uh, that was one of the uh, who who had tweeted that that was it. I forget one of the uh, one of the uh, NFL analysts covering the draft here uh, said exactly that that this has the potential to be your most dynamic receiver, which again would be amazing. The cool thing about it. Um, is and, and again, the start to his LSU career was really something. Reached 100 catches faster than any receiver in school history, including Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, and Odell Beckham. I've heard of those guys. Um, so, again, this is a guy who is tracking in the direction of being a, like – an explosive playmaking receiver uh, and certainly a high first round pick. The best part about this is it doesn't matter, right? At this point in the draft – this is the exact type of player you want to take, right? Is boom, bust, roll the dice, lottery ticket. And again, what a coup it would be for the Patriots if they were able to find something, uh, you know, some production out of a player like this uh, right here. How do you see it going here uh, in the early stages of camp? And, uh, you know, is this someone who could theoretically just make the team? And because, again, there's not a lot of spots on your team for receiver. And again, let's just rip through who we know is going to be here. You know you have jobs for Devontae Parker, Tyquan Thornton, uh, and certainly uh, Kendrick Bourne, uh, and, uh, and Juju Smith-Schuster. That's four. How many receivers are you carrying here? I think the veterans are probably, I mean, you know, if somebody doesn't play well, that's a different story. But assuming they play to the level they're capable, I think it's going to be tough for them to maybe crack, for Booty to crack the starting roster. Uh, he's definitely going to, I think he could definitely be a rotational guy because he is the most explosive player, maybe outside of type one. I think he is. Also. I think he slides in kind of behind Bourne here, wouldn't you say? I think that, well, that's what I think it is. I think it's between those two. Like, I think, I think Juju is probably going to be your consistent slot guy. But again, I, I, it, it's, it's tough because it's always going to go to the veterans at first. 
And if he outplays them, then yeah, he's going to start seeing more time. But there's also just the reliability. Like he is still a rookie. He is still learning the nuances of the game, even though he is super dynamic. So I would be surprised if he's someone that you always see or like consistently see in three receiver packages. Uh, but I think he's probably your fourth guy. Um, even like I think Demario Douglas, who we're going to talk about later, um, even he's the kind of guy who could crack that lineup more than people might expect uh, in his own right. So I would see Booty as more of a rotational guy until the year goes on. And then, you know, we see if he's just completely outplaying guys and forcing his way onto the field. But I, I don't think that's a given. Fun, fun pick. And again, he talked to the uh, he talked to the media um, uh, via conference call uh, that the Patriots provided, provided by the Patriots media relations staff. And uh, he, he sounds like a guy who recognizes that um, he missed an opportunity and seems – uh, hungry to kind of prove people wrong. Uh, and again, this would uh, really be something. And this is my favorite, I, I, my favorite, favorite type of pick, my favorite type of free agent flyer, someone who at one point was extremely highly regarded that you're trying to see whether or not um, either people got it wrong or the missteps that they had along the way are things that are in their past. Um, and they can do that. And uh, that's something where the Bel uh, Bill Belichick and the Patriots have succeeded. You don't always hit here. But I, I do think that taking swings like they did here at this point in the draft uh, is worthwhile. And I also think uh, it kind of chilled everybody out a little bit when they did finally take a receiver, which is something obviously everyone covets. And, you know, I think there'd be some fans uh, and some media types out there who who would be happy if they took a receiver with every single pick because um, that's all I want under my Christmas tree uh, when the draft is done. So again, a uh, fun pick, fun to talk about and someone to watch when we get to training camp, Taylor, that's going to be interesting, yes. um, which is a lot of fun. So uh, there'll be a lot more uh, here. We'll get a look here at mini camp and other, uh, other times here and kind of get a sense of uh, what kind of player the Patriots got. Uh, so fun pick Keishon Butte here. Uh, Pick number 187, wide receiver at LSU. More from Taylor Kyles on Butte and all of the Patriots draft picks on clnsmedia.com. Also subscribe to our Patriots Press Pass YouTube channel where you can see uh, profiles on every single player the Patriots picked.